Uf. Ja. Mm -hmm. That is delightful. Hi, I'm Kristen Stengel. I am an editor at The Spruce Eats, and today I am cozying up to a classic, ideal grilled cheese sandwich. To me, the perfect grilled cheese sandwich is chock full of cheese. It is crispy, buttery exterior, and it's a snap to make. If you love grilled cheese, if you love easy, cozy food, be sure to subscribe to The Spruce Eats. The most important part about an ideal grilled cheese sandwich is the cheese. It's the entire sandwich. You want a mixture of melty and gooey, ooey cheese, but we also want flavor. We don't want just the melt with no taste behind it, which is why I'm a strong proponent of having a couple of cheeses in my grilled cheese sandwich. So for the melt and ooey gooey factor, I'm going with a Gruyere. It's just buttery and nutty, but it's just pure melt. But then for the flavor, I am the biggest fan of a sharp cheddar. And I'm talking like the sharpest, most intense sharp cheddar you can get your hands on. So the reason that I don't use pre-shredded bagged cheese is because it just doesn't melt the same. And the reason for that is because your pre-shredded cheese is usually coated in some kind of potato starch or other preservative that keeps it from clumping together in the bag so that it keeps the shreds of cheese nice and separated. But the problem is when you then go to try to melt it, it doesn't stick together, it doesn't do the same meltiness that a freshly grated block of cheese will give you. Your Gruyere cheese, since this cheese is all gonna get mixed together anyway, I'm not really worried about cleaning off my cheese grater. It gives you a little bit of a workout. If you have a lot that you need to grate and you have a food processor with a grater attachment, you can obviously just throw the hunks in and get a really quick result, but it's a lot of cleanup and frankly, it's just a minimal amount of effort. For a grilled cheese sandwich, you can go with, I think, any bread that you think toasts well. That will work as your grilled cheese, but I have very, again, strong opinions about this. When I'm craving a classic, ideal grilled cheese sandwich, I just wanna keep it simple. I want your classic white bread. You can go with a pre-sliced white, or if you wanna be fancy about it, go with like a Texas toast, like a thicker sliced white bread would be lovely as well. But I've also got here some nice marble rye. It makes a really delicious grilled cheese, but that's just not what I'm feeling today. I want the classic like the cozy, the kind of childhood favorite, and so I'm gonna be using white bread. So now we're into assembly mode, and I keep saying we, and I mean me. And here's where things are gonna get maybe a little polarizing for people, but I'm fine with that. I use both mayo and butter. The butter is flavor. It's the obvious contribution. It's gonna be in our pan as we're browning our bread and cooking the grilled cheese sandwich. And because a grilled cheese has so few ingredients, I really do encourage the nicest butter, mayo. Hellman's are bust. Mayo allows our smoke point to go higher. Mayo's main ingredient is oil, and oil has a higher smoke point than butter, so we're gonna give ourselves a little insurance in the pan to make sure we don't burn or totally blacken the outside of our grilled cheese before it gets nice and cooked. So I'm gonna build my grilled cheese sandwich, and every time I do, I have a little existential crisis. Am I building it on my cutting board, or am I building it in the pan? Today I'm feeling as a pan day, so let's go with that. I'm gonna start by just throwing a big old hunk of butter in my pan. Again, we're not measuring, we're having grilled cheese. I'm gonna let that butter, you see how low my pan is. I have it on a, like a medium-low heat. I don't want this butter to get all brown and burnt before I get my sandwich in there. Well, that's bubbling away, I'm gonna start doing the rest of the work. So mayo on my bread. This is your outside of your sandwich. So it's gonna be the thing that touches the pan, wall to wall, end to end of this bread. Mayo my hand a little bit too, moisturizing. La la la. If you don't like mayonnaise, that's a you problem. It's not a me problem. So here we go. Mayo side down on the butter. Again, copious amounts of butter in this pan. Get that going. Oh, I'm sizzle. So the butter's talking to me. She's saying, Kristen, you deserve this sandwich. You deserve nice things. So I'm gonna start adding the cheese. This is where it gets a little messy, but you know what? So be it. Cause you know, the little crispy fried pieces of cheese that fall on the outside are like an additional added bonus. So I'm just sort of mixing as I go. If I just put all the sharp cheddar down as one layer, and then the Gruyere, it's like kind of defeating the purpose of having the blend. Okay, last step. Mayo the outside of the top of my sandwich. Last part, just be careful not to put the mayo this way. We want the mayo face side up. 
and now we're gonna let it go. Low and slow is the goal here. We don't want, like I said before, to crank it up so hot that your bread toasts before the cheese has really had a chance to melt. And I'm just gonna shut up so we can listen to the symphony. So I'm gonna flip the sandwich now, and I know it's ready because it's been about two minutes at this sort of low temperature. You can you can pick it up a little bit. You can do a little like peek a roux. And again, it looks brown. It looks like exactly what I want a grilled cheese sandwich to look like. That's how I know it's ready. Carefully, but again, not too carefully. We're not, this is not surgery or anything. It's kind of a slapdash sandwich. We're gonna flip around. <sighs> I'm using a nonstick pan, but I do think that cast iron works great for grilled cheese. You just want something that conducts heat really well and really evenly. I have been wild sometimes and I have done other things. Uh, Add-ins for a grilled cheese sandwich that I love. Pesto, crumbled bacon. I'm not a big fan of like the tomato in the grilled cheese because I feel like it will just ooze out liquid and then your cheese just gets like slippery and the tomato starts popping out the side as you're trying to eat it. So I would advise against, but a tomato jam. And then the kind of cheese you use, you can get a little crazy too with that. You can go classic craft singles if you just want that like iconic sort of flavorless but mostly just gooey grilled cheese sandwich. You can go goat's cheese. You should probably avoid Swiss though. Swiss when you melt it just becomes like a grease slick. But if you mix it with other cheeses, that's great. I do think the perfect grilled cheese sandwich is a blend of cheese. Looking underneath, just looking good. At this point, my bread is perfectly browned and I could truly let this sit in here for minutes and not be worried about the bread getting burnt. And I'm gonna let it just kind of hang out because I want that cheese to be as melty as possible on the inside. There's nothing worse than getting a grilled cheese sandwich and you cut into it and like, some of the cheese is still midway melted. I am loving the little crispy kind of grilled actual just cheese that's happening here in the pan. I mean, hi, I'm not mad at that. That's like a delicious, it's the keto grilled cheese because there's no bread. You only get this again if you're using grated cheese because you're kind of building in the pan, the little grates of cheese are falling all around. And so you get it kind of two for one. It does look like bacon. Yum, cheese bacon. I think the best grilled cheese I've ever had wasn't so much about the cheese, the bread, anything. It was like someone else made it for me. Um, I think that's kind of the case with honestly a lot of food that I have like strong vivid memories about is like someone, whether it was my grandmother, a friend, or just a really caring and like concerned, lovely chef. When someone else makes food for you, it just tastes better. I'm gonna take it out of the pan now. I'm also gonna remove our little extra treats. Yum. This is like internet goes crazy. Look at her. Just mmm. I do want to just let it sit so that it has a chance to kind of seize up a little bit so the cheese doesn't go just leaking everywhere. So the last and sort of like most important component of the grilled cheese is how you cut it. This is non-negotiable. Diagonal. Diagonal or bust. So yeah, it's just wrong. Like our dumb little chimpanzee brains think that you get more, but you don't. Obviously it's still the same sandwich, but it feels like you're getting more. You also, mathematically you do actually get less of a crust ratio. So you get like more bites that are just like, it feels like the crust is not overwhelming the sandwich when you cut it diagonal. Also, it gives you a place to start. I feel like holding a sliced in half sandwich to like a rectangle half, you're like, where do I put my mouth? This is like very clearly right here at one of the end points. It also makes when you cut it this way for really great dippage. Plating is probably me just standing over the cutting board and eating it, if I'm honest, but. What would you serve a grilled cheese with? I would serve a grilled cheese with some tomato soup because it's just the perfect, it, it's a classic for a reason. This is just pure comforty, gooey ooeyness and the acidity of a tomato soup really cuts it nicely. Like a sparkling wine feels fun. Like if I'm like, think of it like a cheese plate kind of moment. I love dipping my grilled cheese sandwiches. As much as I love like the classic grilled cheese, I'm a huge condiment fan. So dipping my grilled cheese into sriracha or chili crunch, or if I want a sweet moment, some hot honey or a jam. That's that nice crispiness we want. Bite time, starting from the corner here. Mm-hmm. That is delightful. Crunchy outside, full of buttery flavor, because I use like half a stick of butter to make it. And the cheese is perfect. It's got actual flavor from that sharp cheddar, but it's still ooey gooey. It's absolutely turned out exactly how I envisioned it. This ideal, cozy grilled cheese sandwich. It's perfect. It's one of the perfect foods. Do you have strong grilled cheese feelings? Please let us know in the comments below and subscribe to The Spruce Eats.